had to be like that. Why? You can see me! Yay! <laughs> That's better. <laughs> well, this is a whole new thing for us. So welcome to Flower Juice. My name's John McDonald, and as you can see, we've never done a live chat before. So this is interesting from a technical point of view, and it's going to be really interesting from uh, being able to chat with all our subscribers, and you can ask us anything that you want. So it's been really interesting because we said to you on our previous video that we were going to do this, and we asked people if they had any questions that they would like to ask in advance. But ideally, some of you will ask us some questions just now as well. So hopefully we're going to have a bit of a fun time and you're going to really enjoy this little session. And we'll see what happens. Um, we've had quite a few interesting comments so far. So the one thing that came across was people were wondering uh, our kind of setup here. So basically... We work in a hotel. So I'm a florist and I head up a team of people who work at the Glen Eagles Hotel. So if you don't know where Glen Eagles is, it's a large country hotel that's set in the rural countryside of Perthshire in the centre of Scotland. So it's a hotel that's very well known for golf and it's quite a large hotel. Uh, we have three large golf courses, we have about a thousand staff. Uh, multiple restaurants, it's really quite a large concern. So we're very lucky and very fortunate to work in such a nice environment. Um, so in the team, in the department, there's six of us, and basically we're all full time apart from two people who basically do a four day week. So one of the main things about the hotel is that we work seven days a week, and we work 365 days of the year. So even on Christmas day, part of the team's already here. So what we tend to do for Christmas is half the team are off and then they cover, uh, then we take turn about. So if you're off at Christmas, you're working New Year. If you're off at New Year, you're working Christmas. So essentially we're here all the time. So one of the questions I got asked was, uh, how many full-time staff? Well, there's six of us in the department. Uh, is the work you produce on the video used? Well, we've covered quite a range of work and a lot of the pieces that we've done, we've tended to use in the hotel. Um, so some of the ones that you'll have seen, we might have used on the guest relation desk or we might have used it in the ladies toilet or maybe on a console table. We do try and basically reuse the work or use orders that we're planning to do. Uh, now, is the camera operator a florist as well? Well, our camera operator is Janos, and uh, Janos is basically my colleague, he's from Hungary, and his real interest is in photography and videos and that type of thing. So he used to work in a different department in the hotel, and now he's transferred across to the florist. So essentially, coming to the florist gave him better hours, because the terrible thing about the hotel is people work a lot of different hours. So we tend to work from eight in the morning till half four every day. The only day that we finish early is on a Sunday where we 
finish at half three. So basically, Janos isn't a florist, but he's our, uh, well, he's the good looking one, and he's the one who does all <laughs> the running. And uh, he, because we're in a physically big building, there's a lot of delivering and things as well. So he kind of is a multitasker, uh, and basically, we have him helping us in lots of ways. Uh, do you only have one outlet? And is that just in housework or general retail as well? So this was for from Halland 3 Napia. So yes, we are just one unit. Essentially, we're not a retail shop. Uh, we're more like a workroom at the back of the hotel. But we cater to a big range of guests and different people. So we have guests who stay in the hotel. We have guests who come for the seasonal ownership. We have members who use the country club facilities in the hotel. We also have staff and members of the public. And we also even do a little bit of funeral work for a couple of local undertakers as well. So we cover a big range of work. And you're probably thinking, why? Well, if the hotel was located in a place like London, there'd be lots of businesses round about and they would probably maybe have an in-house florist to do the flowers in the public areas, but they would probably let all other work come from outside suppliers. Because of where we're geographically located, we basically need to do the majority of the work. Um, it's not essential that people have to use us, but I would say that we do 98% of the flower work that happens in the hotel. Okay. Right, so what's your client's base like? This was from Max Lee Lee. What percentage of corporate clients, regulars and walk-in? Well, as I say, we cover quite a range and we have a lot of different things going on in the hotel. We do do a lot of corporate clients. The hotel does a lot of event work and not so much wedding work, but more event work. So pretty much every day we'll be doing flower arrangements for dinners, uh, maybe for weddings, for different um, functions and corporate work. So that could be like thank you bouquets for the organiser or that could be table flowers for the dinners at night. What advice would I give to newcomers? Well, to give you a bit of background for me, I grew up on a farm and essentially I think I always had that love of being creative and outdoorsy and working with my hands and really I fell into floristry as a Saturday job. So I got a job for a with a lady who basically had a shop in my local town and I went and worked with her for a week for holiday cover and then after that week when the person came back from their holidays it turned out that the lady I worked for she actually did the flowers in the hotel here and I ended up over at the hotel being her gopher so I used to deliver things wash things do all the running around and that was when I was 14 which was many years ago so I kind of fell into it as a Saturday job and now what's happened is that I've uh, gone full circle. So essentially when I got to like 18, 19, it wasn't really presented as a career for a man back in the 80s and uh, I went and did hotel management. So I went and did that for about three, four years and then when I finished that I fell back on floristry because it's the kind of job that you could you could do anywhere and you can take with you and I ended up having my own business. So I worked in a few different shops over those years and also in the hotel and then I had my own business. So I had my own business in Dundee for 10 years and at one point we had three locations. So advice for newcomers, I would say the main thing is to have an open mind, to be engaged in what you want to do and to always be learning. So you might be working with someone who's had 15 years experience. There will always be something that they might do that is a slightly better way than what you knew how to do. So as long as you're generally picking up more and more advice and uh, seeing better ways to work and seeing how other people do things, then it's always a learning curve. So you might work in a shop and you think, this is a terrible shop, it's not a good example at all, but you'll learn something from them, even if you don't think it's a good shop, there'll be something that you do, that they do, that you'll learn, uh, that you'll take away with you. Okay, so I think we should all meet Janos. So, Janos, <laughs> maybe you could tell people why. So, sorry to disturb. <laughs> he does exist. He does exist. Everyone Hello, everyone. Doesn't exist. My name is Janos. I'm the other half of the team. I also have some. Oh, some more questions. Yes. Okay, right. I'll look at the questions. Right. 
Janice, I think you need to admit that this was your idea to do flower juice. So do you want to tell us a bit about yes. that? Yes. Uh, don't even know how, how that started, to be oh, honest. Oh. I always fancied photography. And now with the new, like, all smartphones, you can just snap a picture here, snap a picture there. And I always wanted to do something different. So uh, videography, I don't even know how that came as a... I just wanted to do something with video making and things like that and yeah I think I just ask you to if, if you'd fancy to collaborate is that the word to do yeah. something you wanted to play with making a video and have a test of one yeah. and you basically said uh, can you do something flowery and we'll see how that works yeah. so I think you were seeing it more from your point of view yes yeah. And I thought, well, I don't mind doing it. I can just do a quick arrangement. And it just worked so well that that was yeah. when we decided that maybe we could make another video and another video. And uh, we've basically done Flower Juice um, as our own little project. So from a photography point of view yeah. and a video point of view, but also from a flower point of view. And it's just worked very yeah. well. Yeah. So it's fitted in well with work because we tend to make arrangements that we maybe use again at work. Um, and also it's fitted in well because I think from my point of view what I wanted to do was share an experience of flowers and also promote flowers and people working in the industry because it really is an exciting industry and I think um, sometimes people don't realise that or appreciate that so if we can share things and get people feeling inspired I think that's really good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So this is how we start. You can just, you don't need to write back, you can just, if, if you want, just tell yep. your okay. answer or something. Uh, right. Can you give some tips on pricing? Well, that is a tricky one, and that really depends where you are. Um, so I think if you're obviously in a city like London, then you've got a lot more overheads and a lot more things on top that you have to take into consideration. If you're in more of a rural area, then you also have to take into consideration that you don't have the volume. So I think everyone needs to think of pricing in a way that suits them. And I would definitely say that when people first go into floristry or having their own business, they want to be very keen and they want to be very competitive. But I think you need to price yourself in a similar way to your competition and not make too much of a difference. So if you work in a shop where the starting price of bokeh is £25 and then you open your own shop, don't start doing them for £17 because the bit that you're losing is probably the money that you need to live on. So you need to price things in a way that works for the business and for the customer. Um, if you get a bargain on a product, then you can pass that, uh, pass that on to your customers. If you get a bargain on a product and there's a lot of it, then maybe you might just want to price it as usual and that's a bit of a bonus. Um, one thing I've always done with, say, wedding work is if I have a consultation with a bride and we go through everything and then I give a price, I stick to that price. So if I've judged it wrong, then that's my own fault. Uh, I think it's, it's not good to say, well, prices vary. I mean, sometimes they do. But if you think that you're doing a lot of wedding work, maybe over a long summer period, then maybe it just comes out in the wash anyway. So one you'll make, make on, one you'll maybe not make what you were planning on. And overall, as long as you're achieving what you wanted, then that's the main objective. Okay. I see something about this time, so I may move closer to you. Is that okay. okay. Yeah. Now... Someone's going to Dublin. Red metaphors. You're going to Dublin. How lucky are you? I don't think you'll be near a garden. You're going to be in. Uh, you're going to be in the pubs if you're in Dublin, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I've been to Dublin twice, and I would recommend that you maybe go to. Would you mind to hold that just for a second? Okay. Uh, maybe go to the Botanic Gardens. Uh, when I went there, we went to the Botanic Gardens for an afternoon and it was absolutely beautiful and just a really nice place to go and visit. Uh, I think you'll find generally the countryside is beautiful. Uh, there's lots to see out in the countryside. And I think Ireland is quite famous for lots of kind of 
large homes and uh, nice gardens, so there's going to be lots to do. But there's lots of information. Probably your best thing to do when you get there is go to tourist information and or even walk into a florist and ask them what they suggest. But definitely botanic gardens would be the one that I would go to. Okay. <laughs> Hi Carlos. Hi Roy David. <laughs> Hi Karen Preston. Oh right, what did Isabel say? Um, yeah, okay. Right. Let's have a look at some of these prices. Uh, some of these things. Right, Morag Ross, she asked, John, I really struggle with wrist corsages and how to attach the flowers to bracelets so it's secure and won't fall off during the day. Can you give some tips or even better post some videos? I think for this one, we are going to do a specific video that I can show you in more detail. But what I would tend to do is you can buy pre-made bracelets and they all have like a little ribbon that's rolled up into little rows. And when you open it up, you've got four pieces of ribbon that you can basically tie your bracelet on. Now you can do that, but there's always the worry that what if it slips off? What I like to do is just use the bracelet as it is and maybe use, use the ribbon as a security, but I also like to take a rose wire, gutter it or uh, tape it, and then use that as two more attachments through, but keeping the tied wire side on the outside of the bracelet. So from the inside, it's still very comfortable. And then this wire where it joins can stay underneath. But we'll show you this in a video. Um, what you want is definitely for it to be secure, but also for it to be safe for the, the person who's wearing it and not uncomfortable. Now, following on from that, someone asked me, how do you wire leaves, which is interesting, and you either know it or you don't. So just to give an example now, but again, we'll probably cover this a little bit more detail when we look at corsages. So I've got a leaf here, and what you'll find with most leaves is they have a strong vein down the back. So what I'm going to do is take a wire and just stitch through the back of that about two thirds of the way up. And then what we can do is just fold that wire down. Now you could just tape that off if you wanted, just like that, or you can just put a loop on it. And it's as simple as that. So it doesn't matter, this is a salal leaf, but whether it's an ivy leaf or a piece of ruscus, this is generally what you do is you put a stitch in. And you're probably thinking, why am I putting that stitch so high up? It's so you've got the ability to really change that leaf. If you do it low down, it's just going to stick out and you've not really done much. So, how to wire a leaf we've covered. Excellent. Um, now, someone asked me, where would you buy individual flowers? And I had to really kind of think about that. The best place for individual flowers would be at your local florist. Uh, pretty much everywhere else, the supermarkets, the wholesalers, they're going to sell flowers pre-bunched into certain quantities. So supermarkets, you're maybe going to get 15s or 12s or 20s. In the wholesalers, you're going to get things in 10s, 25s, 50s, uh, bigger quantities. Um, so for individual flowers, I would definitely go and see your friendly local florist, ask them for their advice, build up a relationship with them, because maybe if you're needing individual flowers, it's for competition work, they can find you things that you might not be able to get, and they might be able to help you in lots of ways other than necessarily what you're thinking of. So definitely worth creating a relationship with your local florist. Okay, so uh, Bethan, you asked, how do we source our flowers? Do we have a particular supplier or grow your own? And we basically use three different suppliers. I think for most businesses, you'll find that you won't have one supplier that you totally use for everything. Um, we tend to have two main ones that we use and we order online. So everything's basically done on the computer and we just get that coming in. So we get flowers in, say on a Tuesday, a Thursday, that's probably the main days, but you can also get Friday, a Wednesday, a Monday. Flowers can come in. Sometimes you maybe want things staggered. Other times you maybe just want to have two big deliveries. We also get a Flying Dutchman on a Sunday and they come with their great big lorry and it's full of lots of different things. And what's nice about that is that you're able to buy the physical product. So you're able to see things that are new, things that are different. And I'll, I'll be honest, their price is quite keen. So if you can get a local Flying Dutchman 
that's brilliant. I don't know if you have Flying Dutchman in a, places like America or Australia, but if you have van salespeople, then um, they can be very competitive and it's nice to see the product and it's nice to see new products. Okay, right. What else? Um, Diana, you asked about holding a hand tie and she, you basically said that your hands are not firm enough when holding or arranging a hand tie. Do you have any tips for that? Right, for a hand tie, you need to hold your hand really loose. So you're probably thinking you're not holding it firm, but if you're finding that your arm's getting tired, it's probably because you're holding things off at an angle or a slant. If you hold it up and down the way, you'll find it's more balanced and you'll find that your hand doesn't get so tired. If you're also worrying about your hand tie as you're making it and you've put some tension into your arm, you'll find you'll get tired and much quicker. A good tip is that if you start to feel tired, you can always rest the bokeh still in your hand against the edge of your desk. And that works really well. So sometimes you get distracted or you need to do something with your other hand, just put your hand down on the desk and that really just allows your arm just to have a little bit for rest. The main thing for hand ties, lay everything out, make sure it's prepared really well, uh, there's no leaves before below the tying point and just put it together quickly. So ideally you don't get interrupted and have that piece of string or twine ready so you can just tie it off. Okay, um, do you have any tips for flower combinations? Well, I have to confess, and I'm not really gonna tell everyone about this, but I've actually got red-green colour blindness. So red-green colour blindness, I can see everything in colour, but maybe I see things in a slightly different shade. And what you find with red-green colour blindness is, Say there was a bush really far away and it's covered in red flowers. To me, it just looks green. But as I get closer, then I see the difference. So it's actually about shade. So if you've got uh, a blue and a purple and they're very similar in shade, I tend to see them as being the same colour. So what I've done with regard to colour is I tend to keep it simple. So you either make everything in one colour uh, or you make things in colours that are very sympathetic and complementary or you pick two, two strong colours and put them together. So like purple and orange, uh, yellow and blue, uh, white and pink. Um, you know, there's different combinations, but try and not throw in everything. But if you do want to make a bokeh where it has to be multicoloured, then the trick is really just to go for it. But stick to primary colours rather than pastels, and then you'll get a really dual um, kind of dual styled bokeh that really pops. If you have all those colours but they're pastel-y, it'll just look a bit wishy-washy. So if you're going to go for it, really go for it. Okay, right. Uh, Libra. Now, Libra, thank you for your messages. Uh, now, one question. Do I belong to a flower society? Well, when I had my business, I was part of a professional organisation called the BFA, which is the British Florist Association. Uh, I've also been involved a little bit with Society of Floristry back in the day. I tried to do their exams. At the moment, I'm a member of a flower club. So in the UK here, we have professional florists and we have amateur flower arrangers. And in a way, there's a bit of an overlap, but in a way, there's not. Uh, but the good thing about doing flower arranging as opposed to floristry is it really develops your eye. So I've been a member of a flower club called Beyond 2000, which is a hands-on club. And its objective is to do things that are contemporary and modern and trying to look for new techniques and trying to be progressive and basically up your skill level. So the great thing about maybe looking at flower arranging is that it develops your eye it gives you new techniques. And sometimes those techniques you might think, I'll never use that, but you know them and they're up your sleeve. And then that one day that you need to do something a little bit different, you can pull it out of the bag and just do that little quirky thing that makes people go, ooh, that's different. So I would definitely recommend joining a flower club or getting involved with flowers in a different way. Now that could actually be, I was speaking to someone um, through Flower Juice and she was saying that her main activity with flowers is doing flowers for a church. Well, if you're doing flowers regularly and you're doing them for something like a church, then that gives you an opportunity to try different things, to get in different products, and just to really get hands-on with that material and enjoy it. 
Okay, right. Ooh, do I cut the throats of my tulips? <laughs> well, um, mm, do I cut the throats of my tulips? What I tend to do with tulips is just give them a cut, put them in good cold water and let them have a good long drink. Um, I, I did see a tip where apparently you can stop them growing by squeezing just under the neck and you hear a little uh, three are done and three, to be honest, I didn't see any ideas. If you are told of something, try it out. You know, if someone says lemonade's good for flowers, then get a bunch of some flowers and put half in lemonade and half in water and see what they do. So it's, it's also testing some of those things and see if they work for you or not. Okay, right. Mm, who else have we got? Let's see. This is great that you guys are all getting connected. Mmm, folding an asp aspidistra leaf, Tony. I find actually the easiest thing with an aspidistra leaf, it depends what you're going to do. Most people want to give them a roll and just have it so that it's a loop. What I tend to do is take the tip, fold it over a couple of times, and then just pierce through with the stem. So if Yanis, you get me an aspidistra leaf, that would be great. And the aspidistra leaf will last for weeks and weeks. So actually that damage that you cause to the end of the stem, uh, to the leaf itself by piercing through, it's really not going to kill the leaf for the length of time that you have that arrangement. So it's very simple, it's very straightforward. You can use staples, you can use glue, uh, but I do tend to find that if I use a stapler, I end up uh, getting a staple in my finger. So what I would do is cut the stem so you've got a sharp point, and then here, just fold it over. Now the veins all run in a straight way, so we want to just fold it maybe to the side and to the side. And then we can just skewer through. And straight away you've got a very simple loop that's totally secure, that's not going to run, and you don't have a staple in your finger or two fingers stuck together with glue. So, dead easy. Right, I think... Um, Right. Someone asked us, Lizzie B asked, what flower types do not open any further after picking? So basically, when, when this person wants to do an arrangement, they're looking for flowers that basically aren't going to really develop. So maybe they could make it in advance and it's not going to change. That's quite tricky because I think most flowers uh, will develop in some way, shape or form. So the only ones I could really think of were probably like your calla lilies, carnations, they're not going to alter very much. I mean a calla lily is really just going to stay pretty much exactly the same as it is from the moment you get it. But I was trying to wrap my brains and even things like Leatris, they're going to come in not showing a lot of colour and then a few days later they're going to show a lot of colour. So it's whether you mean are they going to get a lot bigger so like uh, an oriental lily is going to open up and get quite large. Um, I think when you're creating a design and you're thinking this is for a few days time, then you maybe want to just take that into account. So you put in your oriental lily and it's a bit tight and then in a few days time, and you leave a little bit of space around it and then in a few days time it's opened up. So just taking that into account that things will change rather than necessarily looking for things that would change because I think you'll find most things do. Okay, now someone did ask me if I've got a favourite flower. Um, yeah, what's your favourites that you always want to have available? Yeah, I don't really have any favourite flowers. I think the great thing about flowers is that they're seasonal. So as you go through a year you've got Christmas into spring, you've all those beautiful uh, spring bulbs, then we start to have the lovely peonies and then into the summer flowers and you're always kind of slightly looking forward to what's coming up and what's going to be next. Um, and really nowadays in the world everything you can buy flower wise is available somewhere. So at some place in the world they're growing roses or they're growing peonies or uh, there's very few things that aren't available. Uh, whereas years ago, when you look at flower work, 
people had to use what they had. So when you looked at pictures of wedding bouquets, they were just full of one particular flower because that's all they could get. Now you could have tulips in July if you want. Uh, the range of colours might be slightly reduced, but they're available. The only problem with buying things out of season is that they're never quite as good, they're never, the quality's never quite as good, and they're like, well, for example, the tulips in July, if you've got very hot weather, they're just going to go over like that. So if you can use things that are slightly more seasonal or seasonal in your area, I would say that's a better option. Okay. Right, now, Crafty Limit. I love all your names. Hi John, my daughter and her partner are going to a wedding at the end of August and would like me to make their buttonholes. Their request is for something rustic. Can you contain dried flowers, or fresh, or a mixture of both? Could you give me any ideas? Thank you, Linda. Of course you can put dried flowers in. I mean, a corsage is really just a little detail. It's an embellishment. You can put in ribbons and pearls and diamantes. All those type of things we would think of anyway, but there's no reason why you can't use berries, uh, little bits of wheat or barley. That would be really, really nice. Some of the grass seed heads like the setaria, uh, fountain grass, all those things would look really nice in August. And I think if you're thinking kind of, you can go two ways in August, it depends what the weather's like, but if it's slightly more autumny, then going for stronger colours, the kind of yellows and oranges, uh, that would be nice, but maybe put them in combination with a bit of purple that they really pop. Uh, again, I think what we'll do is we're going to look at that as another video uh, and look at a few different corsages. Okay, more questions? Or what? Don't know where you were. I was lower down, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, Libra, you miscalculated the type. You didn't miss anything, it was just Janos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you will be able to see it when we finish, you know, to yeah. if they want. How much do you pay for your flowers? Well, we basically buy our flowers wholesale and the prices vary and really, because of where we are in Europe, everything really comes through Holland. So Holland has got really the market leader in um, the auctions and the supply and distribution of flowers. But that doesn't mean to say that they can just put any price on. One good thing about Holland is that they really also control quality and look after people from that point of view as well. Prices, I think the main thing is if you're buying online from a wholesaler and you don't need a specific flower, like, a, like say you want a red rose, but it doesn't have to be red Naomi. You can just go on the filters, click on the red, and that will just show you all the red roses that are available. There's also on the filters tends to be like a little uh, guide for prices. You can reduce the top price and you can look for a rose the size you want, the colour you want and the price you want. And then if it's for something important, I would maybe order it the week before just so you can test it and see what it's like. And then you know that you can reorder it for the week after for the actual thing that you're wanting. But generally, I think customers are not necessarily specific. Customers have an idea of what they would like with regard to size, cost, style, feel, what they want the flowers to do for them. And then it's our job to create that. But they don't need to be experts in individual flowers or individual varieties. So it's up to us to best suggest or best purchase for those um, things that we're needing to do. Okay. Right. Ooh. Oh. Right, Judith, uh, you would like to learn how you can do wedding jobs. Right. Wedding jobs? Well, I think it's interesting. When I finished college and had my own uh, worked in a shop and then I create had my own shop I opened the door of my shop and I didn't know if we were going to do weddings or funerals or gifts and in some ways you need to you need to wait and see what people want you to do so you might want to do wedding work but you might be in an area that's better for funerals or you might be in an area that's better for events or you might be in an area that's better for gift work so there's no harm in creating a business or being a very broad business where you do all of that. 
and in some ways that's quite enjoyable, but there's no harm in specialising as well. The main thing about weddings is that weddings, uh, brides want to know that you have the confidence and they want to feel confident in you that you can deliver. So you can't look like you're not sure of prices, that you're not sure of uh, times for delivery. So when dealing with people with weddings, you need to be very professional, very organised, very clear, uh, and just make them feel that you're going to look after them. Um, and that's the best way to deliver on their weddings. And you know, if a mistake happens, then put your hands up and say there's a mistake. But you really want to make sure that everything happens. Uh, with things like weddings and funerals, there's no doing it the next day. It really needs to be done right on the day. So making sure that everything's perfect and everything's delivered well and people have all the information to know that you're going to deliver that. But really, with wedding work, with funeral work, it's very much you speaking to people and making a connection and making them totally happy that you are confident to deliver what they want. And you really have to listen to what they want. So you could have a bride comes in and she wants to have the most hideous flowers, but if that's what she wants, you have to do the hideous flowers to the best of your ability because she will love them and that's the main thing for her on the day. You can also give a little bit of advice and you can kind of suggest, but I definitely wouldn't steer people away from what they want themselves because if they, if they already know what they want, then it's our job to deliver that. Okay. Oh, good hand tie tips. Well, one thing I didn't mention when we were talking about hand tie earlier was it's a good idea if you've got all your stuff laid out and it's all pre-prepared. So there's no leaves on the, on the stems underneath where the tying point's going to be. You've got nice clean material and you're prepared. Then put it together. So keep your hand nice and loose. Uh, hold it up and down the way rather than over. If your hand does get tired, rest it on the desk. And once you've tied it, a good idea is to have a bucket of water just sitting ready so that you can trip and put it in the water if you need to answer the phone or you need to go and get the wrapping paper. If you're going to be distracted, at least you know those flowers are in water. What I tend to do is I would put any wrapping around the bouquet first, then cut the stems before I, if I was going to aqua pack it, uh, before I, you know, just finish that off. Uh, so basically, you don't want when you're doing your bulky for it to be out of water for any length of time and to be getting dry. You want to make sure that those stems get a cut and have some water in some way, whether you're putting them in a vase or putting them into an aqua pack. Oh, any way to transport flowers beside boxes? Well, there's lots of different systems that you can uh, create or use. So you could have boxes uh, or buckets, square buckets, where you put each item into the bucket and then you can just stack them in. Um, I've seen a system where people have put shelving into a van and into the shelving has been cut whole with buckets and then they can drop arrangements into those. Um, another way is actually bungee, bungee cords. And there are systems where people have got like deep foam where they've cut out like a shape that's slightly star shaped so it can take bigger or smaller but it'll hold things upright. So kind of foam blocks works quite well. But definitely from the experience I've had, if you put something in a van for transport and you cut corners and put it in there and it can fly around, it will fly around and you'll end up having to spend time sorting it out. So it's better worth taking a few more minutes, making sure that it's stable in the back of a, a car or back of a van and it's not going to move. Um, yeah, I think there's lots of different ones. There's some systems you can buy and then you can try and think of your own. Depends on your vehicle, I think. Okay. Berlin. Hello Berlin. Hi Sylvia. <laughs> Um, any tips to stop foliage turning brown? Well, I must admit, I don't tend to use the Oasis glue a lot. Um, I'm 
old enough to be a bit old school and from that period we wired everything so if in doubt we wired if i'm using glue i tend to use the cold glue so the cold glue is great it just takes a, a minute or so to set and you maybe just want to hold things for a second um, but i've been through that whole period of wiring things the hot glue and now cold glue and i can definitely say i still like wiring but i would definitely use cold glue hot glue i've gone away from and um, i have burnt myself to pieces when we did wedding work with hot glue and yeah i i don't think you need it actually um there was a real there was a real preference for doing wedding work in basically like dry oasis with hot glue and now i think you can get wet oasis which is just the same kind of bulky holders and as long as you wire things in then I would stick with either wiring or cold glue. So cold glue probably for the embellishments. Uh, right, Pippa Sweeney. I'm a floristry student. What's the best way to get started running your own flower business? Love your tutorials. Best way to get started in your own flower business? Well, it depends where you are. If you're a complete beginner, I think you need to go and learn some floristry. So either go to college or get a job in a local shop and just get in some hours handling the product and working and doing different things uh, before you commit yourself to having your own business. You definitely need to have a skill set and I think a lot of people have a skill set with floristry but there's also another side. You also need to have a little bit of business set as well. So you need to understand how to get the phone connected, how to get the internet connected, how to uh, reach your target audience. And I think if you're going to create a flower shop, one big question would be to ask, is there a need for that shop? I think a lot of people make money and they don't really have a life because if you only, if you create a business where there's only you, you're very much tied to the shop. So realistically, you want to create a business where there's going to be three, four or five of you working together pay off and you can go on holiday and you have uh, the benefit of being a strong group so you want to know that in an area there's actually uh, a need and a desire for floristry and what do the customer want there's no point in setting up a shop and saying I'm going to have a wedding design business if there's not a lot of weddings in the area you might be better opening up one that does funeral work because there's a lot of older people. So you really need to do a little bit of market research. And it sounds crazy saying do some market research, but actually just go and stand on the corner of the street that you were thinking of opening your shop in for two days and ask people, um, make up a little survey that's not specifically flowers, but maybe ends up with it and just say, can I ask you a few questions? What do you think of the local shops? What's your most important? Uh, thing that you look for in a local shop, what would be the kind of opening hours for a small local shop that you would want it to have, and then you can ask them a few more questions. So I would definitely go out and ask 30, 40, 50 people their opinion before you do anything, because you might find that you create something that's amazing, but it needs to work economically as well. Okay. Okay, someone's saying that um, all the flowers that they use are from Kenya. Uh, yeah, Kenyan flowers are good. Um, I mean, nowadays flowers come from all over. So from Colombia, from America, um, basically Amsterdam. It's across the whole world. Um, and in a way, that's a really good thing. And the good thing about them going generally through the Dutch auctions is that they're quality controlled. So yeah, Kenyan flowers, brilliant. What flowers would you suggest for a bridal bokeh for an August wedding? Uh, California is getting hotter than before. Well, it depends on your bride. Um, it really depends on the whole styling of their wedding. So what I tend to do if I'm speaking to a bride is say, right, do you have any key words that you would use to describe your wedding? So would you call it... Uh, traditional or modern or simple or uh, white you know people have key words that they might want to say so um, you know at the moment it's all kind of shabby chic and uh, kind of boho 
vintage, you know, there's different styles. So I would find out about their style, uh, find also about their dress, because if their dress is, if it's got a lot of detail on it, you probably don't want to hide that. If it's a very big dress, you probably want to do more of a drop style. Uh, so you need to think about a bokeh style that will suit their dress style. And from there, then you can suggest flowers. I think what I find now is that most brides come in and they already have an idea of what they love. But things for lasting, if it's going to be really hot, then you're more likely to want to suggest orchids, uh, maybe the calla lilies. Definitely the orchids would be quite nice, um, would be quite good, but it depends on your bride. Ooh. <laughs> Red metaphors. What's my preferred method for keeping hydrangea hydrated? I'll be honest, hydrangea have been the bane of my life. When I had my own business for 10 years, uh, we did a lot of wedding work. And that was when hydrangea started to become very popular. And back then, there was a lot of problems with hydrangea. You could get them in one day and they were all dead the next. It was a bit of a nightmare. So I used to try and put people off. For hydrating them, um, what I tend to do is when they come in, they'll get recut, put into cold water and really given a good drink overnight. So they're in a cool room that's quite dark, not a lot going on round about them. So they're not in sunlight, they're not getting strong light and they can really get a good drink. The best thing to do with hydrangea is to literally use them on the day rather than on the day before um, and put them in last. So that doesn't mean to say that you can't prep a lot of things in advance but maybe you just want to put your hydrangea in last or if you're des doing designs that are all hydrangea well actually that's really easy because it can be put together very quickly so again i would aim to do them on the day if i could so wedding work does test you you will work later and you might start a lot earlier to actually achieve what a wedding needs so there are other products, like there's some Chrysal products that you can choose, and I think there's a new product out, I can't remember the name of it, but it is literally, I think you dip a stem in and they just come back, they just rehydrate. So I think that's also a Chrysal product that would be worth having a look at as well. Let's see. It's a Lucy. Hi <laughs> Lucy! <laughs> hey guys! <laughs> right. Do I prefer weddings or funerals? Ooh. Right, okay. Yes, you can re-watch this video, by the way. Mm. Do I prefer weddings or funerals? I have to say, I do like a nice funeral. And I know that sounds a bit morbid, but the great thing about a funeral is you're doing something that's really important for a family at a difficult time. And generally, it's easier to do from a, a business point of view because it's you can do it within the working day. Weddings tend to really pull you in different directions. They can be a little bit stressful and a little bit uh, full on. Um, some weddings are absolutely amazing. Some you just you think that's a nightmare, but hopefully you achieve everything that they always wanted. But funeral work I really enjoyed uh, doing because sometimes you're asked to create things that are quite special. Um, and sometimes it's about solving problems. So maybe you have a brother and a sister, but they don't want to do one item. So maybe you can create two items that can sit together to look like one item. And that, that's quite nice, finding solutions for what people need. Okay. Let's uh, up here. Yeah, have you ever had flowers not arrive in time for a wedding and how do you deal with it? I once had a busy weekend where we had a few weddings and my first, no, it's like my second delivery of uh, roses and it was all cream roses the whole lot were in poor condition it was like the whole box had been shaken and all the heads had been bashed so every rose was bruised but that weekend we had three weddings and what I found was they were all quite similar so what I was able to do was use the roses from another wedding for that wedding and then we managed to because we had a good relationship with our supplier they actually flew in some more roses for us. So what you'll find is, depending on your supplier, they'll know who in your area might have something that they can get back. They might have some stock that they can supply you with. So if you are a good, regular customer with a supplier, I would expect them to A, solve any problems and also find a solution by bringing you an alternative, whatever that may be. So 
it's also good to have a good relationship with your neighbouring florist. I mean, okay, we're in competition, but we're actually all singing from the same songbook. So one day they might need you, help them. One day you might need them, and that's when you want them to help you. So, you know, if everyone's nice to each other, that's great. That goes a long way. Right. Right. <laughs> Bag corsages, how do you attach a corsage to a bag? I think maybe what we'll do is we'll look at that in a video as well. So we might do two or three videos just covering wrist corsages, handbag corsages and general corsages. Uh, what I tend to do with a uh, handbag corsage is put it on a wire. So all the bags are different. What I tend to do if I'm doing a wedding is persuade the mums to give me their bag because it's actually more reassuring knowing that we've attached it and they didn't have to try and attach it. But what I would tend to do is put it on a long thin wire and put the corsage about one third of the way down. And you could actually make that corsage straight onto the wire. I used to work with a lovely lady called Hazel and what she would do is she would look for a ribbon the same colour as the bag and then ribbon those ends so that they just blended onto the bag. Um, Personally, the magnets are good, but I think the magnets are good on an outfit. They're not so good on a bag. Uh, bags can be too thick and there can be a wee bit too much movement with a bag. So again, I would stick with a wire and then it's, it's interesting. We can, we can look at different ways for how you would attach that. But when it's wired on, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Can you store anything in a cold room after you apply cold glue? Yeah, I don't see why not. I think the problem with cold rooms is that sometimes they can be too cold. So maybe if you're not sure, like say you were making a corsage the night before and you're using cold glue. If you make it the night before, it's probably going to be fine. And you might have a location in your work area, like a stone floor or a tile floor in the bathroom. Just put it on the cold floor and it will get that cold from there rather than putting it in a cold room. Where we're based here in Scotland, we're not necessarily in an area where people use cold rooms. Um, in the south of the UK, where it gets a lot hotter, people are more likely to have a cold room and definitely, definitely in Europe, people are more likely to have cold rooms. Uh, sometimes the problem with cold rooms is that you put something in there, it just holds. But then the minute you take it out, maybe three days later, it, it just opens quicker. So if it was going to last for eight days, it still only lasts for eight days. The danger is that you take it out the fridge at five and then it, it's over in three. So I'm a little bit wary with cold rooms. Yes, back to the magnets. You can't give a customer a magnet if they have a pacemaker. Uh, so that is a question that you do need to ask, is, is the person who's going to have it on them uh, okay to wear it from that point of view? So definitely not if they've got a pacemaker. Do I have a flower school where I teach? I would like to come, wherever it may be. Second the same one. Ooh, second the flower school. Okay, well, we don't have a flower school at the moment but there's no reason why we might not in the future. Uh, we can keep you up to date. If you're interested in Flower School, then let me know and let me know what type of things you might be interested in. And it would also be good to know whereabouts you are and how easy that would be for you to come. Um, I do floral demonstrations uh, for flower clubs and I do sometimes teach workshops. Um, depending on what people are wanting. So like, as I say, I go to a, um, a hands-on flower arranging club. And what you find is that some of the flower arranging hands-on ones will ask people in to be a tutor. So I've been a tutor a few times uh, for different clubs, which is great, actually, I love that. Okay. Uh, quick dip, quick dip for hide, or I think you mean tip for hydrating flowers, Julie Spear. Best thing to do, cut things off at a slant, take a good couple of inches off them and put them into good, clean, cold water. That's the best way. If you've got flowers where you really need to hydrate them quickly, you can do the boiling water technique. 
used to do this years ago, I don't do it now. The best thing you can do if you've got stuff that's really wilty is actually to plunge it in a sink. So recut, drop it in a sink, you might have to put something on top just to keep it in the water. But cold water, and if you can give it overnight, even better. I've seen hydrangeas that look completely past that come back. Um, so time and cold water, clean water. Any mishaps? Mm. Um. Oh, yeah. I once, when I had my own business, I had to deliver a big bokeh and it was to be in a vase and I had made this beautiful big bokeh and I thought, I want to get this delivered and get home and it was a beautiful big house that had been split into flats and I went, the, the front door was open because it was flat so I could get in there, went up the first steps, up the next uh, stairs and then the stairs changed so that they were like more like attic stairs and I basically tripped and dropped it it smashed and there was just this essentially like a bucket of water went down the stairs and I had to go all the way back to the shop remake the the presentation the flowers were kind of okay but the, the vase had broken and it's a nightmare and that's actually a really good tip if you're doing wedding work and you're going to a different location and you're taking glassware, take one or two spare ones because the last thing you need is to be 10 miles away from where you work and find that you're one container broken. Okay. Right now in Saudi Arabia it's really hot. Is it okay to put cool water on the pot of the flowers? Um, do you know, there's, I think here, because we don't have the extremes in temperature, uh, we're much more in the habit of using cold water. I think maybe you might be safer using warm water, or not warm, but just take that chill off the water. So that's not going to do flowers any harm. In fact, they're probably more likely to be able to take up the water if it's slightly, slightly off the cold. So yeah, I'd be a little bit... I'd be more likely to have it slightly warm so that you don't have a big difference in temperature. Okay. Uh, I'm John with an H, uh, as opposed to J-O-N. I am J-O-H-N. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't mind. I'll answer to anything really. Okay. Why did I give up my shop? And what's the hardest bit in running your own flower shop in your opinion? Um, when I had my shop, I had my business for 10 years and in that 10 years we went from a small location to a new location and then we added on a second location, a third location and then ultimately we went back down to one location and then I had the opportunity to sell the business and go and do something different. The thing that I found hard with the shop is that um, every day becomes like Groundhog Day. So people come in and they come up to the counter and they say, do you sell flowers? <laughs> and that's fine in year one, but by year 10, when people ask you if you sell flowers, you could strangle them. So I felt that I'd kind of done everything that I wanted to do with the shop. I also felt that economically things were becoming more expensive and maybe um, the local market that I was in wasn't necessarily going to cope with things going up in price. So there's also a problem when you're a florist. If your bokeys are £20 and prices are going up, you always hold them at £20 and then you just end up, you're not making the money that you were wanting to make to live uh, and to pay for your skill. So I kind of felt that that was the right time for me. And I also wanted to go and do other things. And in lots of ways I came full circle because I ended up coming back to help with a golf event at the hotel for my old boss and uh, I ended up coming back and working here. So I've now been back at the hotel for 10 years. Uh, who's your favourite florist you've worked with over the years? Ah, no. I've worked with quite a few different florists and they've all been wonderful. I used to work with a wonderful lady called Daisy who worked in City Flowers in Dundee. And Daisy had the most amazing skill. When you look at pleated ribbon for funeral work, she could pleat it straight into the item with just the pins. So she pleated it and pinned it as she went. She didn't use a staple gun. 
and uh, I think that would take a little bit of time to sit and practice but to watch her do that was amazing because it was so fast but I've worked with lots of different people over the years and um, it's interesting seeing how people work and how they work in different ways and I think you always learn something from everyone you work with. That was more than that, just so you know. Oh I know. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Libra. I was pretty, pretty pleased. <laughs> oh, so you come from America to Scotland. Right. We'll definitely look into this, I think. This would be really good and it would be so nice to meet you guys. Oh, you'd like to know, Rachel Sutherland, what I thought of the royal wedding. Uh, with regard to the flowers. I think the flowers at the the church were amazing. All the flowers around the doorway was just brilliant. I loved that. It was really romantic and just what I would expect from a royal wedding. The only thing I would say that I was disappointed with was probably her bokeh. I think her bokeh wasn't really what you call a showstopper, but it didn't take away from her. It didn't take away from the dress. It was a perfect accompaniment for everything that was uh, in the day. And it was also a beautiful bokeh from the point of view that there was meaning in it and there was special flowers in it. And I think that's actually more important than having something that was big and showy. So I think all, us, all the florists basically went, oh, <laughs> when we saw her bokeh because it wasn't big. But if it's special, that's the main thing. Would I ever consider doing a TV show like The Great British Florist? Well, if they have a show called The Great British Florist, I'd love to give it a go. Um, I've watched ones like uh, The Sewing Challenge and The Bake Off um, and MasterChef. All these programmes are so interesting to people in the public. And I think it would be really good if a TV company would pull together some people to do some floristry. Uh, in an environment that's similar. That would be really interesting. And I think it would really showcase flowers and the fun of flowers and the profession. It would be really good for our industry. So if anyone's watching who has the ability to make that happen, please get in touch. <laughs> right, how far are you from Aberdeen? We're only about two hours from Aberdeen. So on the Aberdeen side of Glasgow, I suppose, we're 30, 40 minutes from Glasgow and you would drive right past our door if you were coming down. So I think from here to Aberdeen, it's probably about an hour and a half, two hours. It's, it's not bad. It's just basically down the A9. Okay, now there was some other comments that came in. So what design style do I like creating most? I don't think I have a set style. I quite like the variety that you can create and that's really the thing is knowing what you want what i enjoy doing is creating something with a purpose so if that purpose is for an event then it ticks the box for the event if it's for a funeral it's what the people wanted and it was special for that occasion so it's it's that challenge every time you do something to get it right i think do i have a favorite flower yeah, not really i do I like all flowers, so whatever whatever's in season at the moment is probably what I love. The peonies are beautiful. What's the most outrageous floral design request and was it successful? I had to make a three-dimensional pigeon and it had to be a racing pigeon. And when we made it at work, I... Yeah, <laughs> so in case you missed that one, uh, from a gift point of view, we, I once got asked to put a sex toy into the middle of a bouquet. That was interesting. Um, how long has the shop been open? Well, the hotel here has been here since 1920, so I would imagine there's always been a florist. Um, and some, <laughs> yes, design probs. Am I or a home if you take me out for dinner you can find out but my boyfriend might be upset so more questions right oh 
Hi Sue, you're in Perth, well you're not far away. Uh... Oh no, Bob Ross. Well actually that's a real compliment, thank you so much. Uh, I just need the hair, I could have big hair, that would be so cool. Okay, well that tell you. Well, I tell you, this has been really, really interesting and really good opportunity for us to speak to everyone and get some feedback. And uh, we've actually been given lots of ideas for um, new videos and for doing different ones. So I think there's a lot that we've taken on board that we're going to be able to do into the production. So one of the objectives that we had for Flower Juice this year was to create more videos uh, but also maybe to cover things like live chat or Chelsea Flower Show or um, things that you might find interesting. So if you've got ideas that you want us to maybe explore, then just let us know and we will do our best. Okay. Where is Janos? Janos, Libra needs to say hello. Hi, Libra. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, Janos is the expert on uh, photography. He really has taken our game up. If you look back to what we first did, I think the quality of our videos is better. Uh, the sound quality is better. And just when we change the room around as well, I think we've become a lot better. And uh, it's just from doing lots of videos that we've, we've had that experience. Mm -hmm. So it's been really, really good. So if anyone's looking for an expert in videography or photography, then Janos is maybe the person oh. you want to speak to. <laughs> so that's us. We've been talking for an hour now. Has anyone got any last questions that they really want to ask? I'm 49, by the way. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> thank you, Libra. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much for uh, coming and joining in with us tonight because it was a bit of an unknown. We didn't know how the live was going to work, the live chat. So this has been really good fun and really interesting. We've had lots of interesting comments, uh, the odd cheeky one as well. And uh, remember, if you've got any questions or there's anything that you want to know, we might not know the answer, but we'll do our best. And you can always get in touch with us by email or on Messenger or on Flower, Flower Juice. We tend to always try and read all the messages and really uh, take on board all the feedback that we get. So thank you so much for all the feedback. And I must say, we're just very humbled that so many people have enjoyed the videos and subscribed and that we still get more and more people. And really, it's a, it's a really good thing to know that um, people are enjoying them and that we're promoting flowers and becoming a bit of a community, actually, which is great. Oh, hello, Montenegro. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I think we're going to say goodbye for just now. And we've got more videos to come. And we hope that you all keep watching them and keep enjoying them and stay tuned and uh, we shall speak to you all soon. Bye! <laughs>